Behind every bit of mom wisdom is a story. A story of a real mom and real kids just trying to love each other well. Whether you're cozied up on the couch with a mug of coffee or out for a walk, you're welcome to join us as we share stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm Mom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the I'm On Podcast. Abby, Chloe, Susan, Megan, back together once again this week to talk about something that I think most moms have thought about at some point or another, uh, if it, no, no other reason to um, maybe lose some of the baby weight. But the question is, should I diet in front of my kids? And Chloe has this week's story. Yeah, so um, this conversation is inspired by an article that is coming out today. Um, And one of our writers shared a story of her and her kids where um, they were going to one of their favorite restaurants. And then there was this um, statue in front of her and her kids. And um, he had this big sandwich. It was a big boy statue. Just say it. Okay, a big boy statue. Sorry. I don't even know what that is. What? What? No. Big boy. You've never been to a big boy? No. Is that a chain? Uh, Yeah, it's an old chain. It's also, Megan, do you know what it is? No. Oh, it's so cute. It's Isn't a it Tampa? Boy. It's everywhere. And it's also the uh, Dr. Evil's, the shape of Dr. Evil's like lair in Austin Powers. He was I in a big never boy. I've heard of this place. Okay. Sorry, wow. gang. Exactly. Bobby, yeah, Bobby Producer knows. Bobby knows what it is. <sighs> Sorry, and he's Bobby. holding a Trapper Keeper. Oh, gosh, he's are we still talking trapper about keeper. the Trapper Keeper? <laughs> <laughs> Episode six ago. <laughs> Anyways, so the writer's kids saw the big boy statue and um, made some comments saying that he was fat and he needs to go on a diet. And this just made the writer cringe. She was really embarrassed. And it made her wonder, was dieting in front of her kids causing that reaction from her kids to to point and talk negatively about the statue and raise this greater question of should moms diet in front of their kids or should they diet in secret? How do we go about that? Um, and I just think, you know, my reaction to that is how important it is for us to be having conversations with our kids about food and their body, um, positive conversations. You know, I've shared openly on this podcast, I've had a lifelong struggle with food in my body and You know, my situation that I grew up in was a little bit different because my mom um, is diabetic. So she had to eat a certain way. And even though she did her very, very best to communicate with me, I have to eat a certain way because I'm diabetic. You do not eat what I eat. And I knew that. I still was so observant of our food looked different. Our plates looked different. And, I mean, it, it was really hard for me not to hold on to that. And I do not blame my mom for my eating disorder. We've had lots of conversations about it. Um, And, you know, my mom is great. And when I was diagnosed and began treatment, she really wanted to know, was there anything I could have done differently? Was there anything, you know? So I think it's just so important, no matter if you choose to diet, no matter if you have a situation where you have to eat a certain way for your health. What kind of conversations are we having around food that our kids are going to pick up? Because they're not just picking up stuff about food in their body at home. They're picking it up on social media. They're picking it up from their friends because their friends may talk about food differently in their house. So having those conversations because you just never know what kind of sensitivity your kids are going to have to food, diet, body. Yeah. I'll tell you, like, from my perspective, especially researching for this this episode— I feel a little bit overwhelmed, like almost like I have to walk on eggshells. Like, what am I supposed to say? What am I not supposed to say? Because I know I personally don't have the healthiest relationship with food. That's an understatement. But so it's like, this is like one of those things that I'm like, how am I messing my child up today? You know, it's like, you just don't know how to be a normal human that has to eat food every day and not somehow pass along a negative message to your child. Well, the issue is if you've struggled with food or body issues, which most of us have, it's not like alcoholism where you can avoid alcohol. You have to eat every day. It's not something that you can just like act like doesn't exist. You have to interact with food every single day. And food is so good today. (laughs) That's the other thing. Sorry, but it's good. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps getting better. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's true. Well, in that article that you're talking about that Anna wrote, she said, you really, if you want to start a diet, 
um, or if you want to change your diet, because the word diet can mean different yeah. things depending on how you use it. She said, definitely ask yourself three questions. One of them is, what is my goal? And if it's appearance based, and so you're thinking about the, these answers in light of the fact that you're going to be doing this in front of your children, right? If it's appearance based, you say, well, what would it look like to shift to a health focused goal? How would, if my if my goal was health and not appearance, how would that m- how would that change things? You know, you might then talk about getting stronger or sleeping better or yeah. having more endurance to be able to play with your kids longer. Um, and so just right there, that might change the language that you use in front of your kids or the changes that you make in your diet might be influenced by the answer to that question. But I don't think there's any shame when if you answer, if you say, what's my goal? And your answer is, I want to look better in my jeans. I want to... I, I want to look better in a bathing suit. I just, you know, I don't think there's any shame in wanting that because that's just natural when you see all the things that are being thrown at us, you know, image wise. I don't yeah. think there's, I don't think you should feel bad about wanting that, you know? No, I agree. Another question you can ask is how are the eating habits affecting me overall? And I think this is a really big one. This is one that I struggle with. I've had, like, I've done intermittent fasting before and I'll say, well, I'm not going to eat anything until one o'clock, right? And in the morning, my son makes a smoothie for breakfast. And he's like, mom, I made the best smoothie ever. Have a bite. I'm like, "Mm, I can't. Or no, I'm good. You know, even if I answer it in a kind, you know, whatever way. No, I can't. And he's like, no, 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 it's really good. Just have a bite. But in my mind, I've gone, if you take even a single bite, you've broken your fast, you know? And so if, if you want to take on a way of eating, call it whatever you want, and it puts this wall up between you and your kids or gets in the way of family time or, you know, I think that that's, that's a problem, you know? Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I totally agree. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then the third question is, how am I talking about myself? You know, Mm. if you decide to do this in front of your kids and it's going to turn into negative self-talk or make you obsess about food, then it might not be the right thing to do in front of your kids. Yeah, my mom loves to tell me this story, I guess. Like, she had a really good friend when I was really young, and my mom was talking about herself really negatively and her body, and her friend was like, do not talk about yourself like that, and do not talk about yourself like that in front of your kids because your kids hear that, Mm -hmm. and they're internalizing that. And she said it, like, totally changed her perspective on the way she talks about herself, and I think it's a good lesson. Yeah. Susan, I know you've said that you've always just been a petite person and not had to worry about food but did you ever have any like did you ever have issues with food in front of the kids like ever have these conversations with them no megan did i um yes i mean when when i was uh little well not little i was probably what 10 11 i there was a period i think where you know everyone has that awkward middle school phase where you're in between growing and like your body physically stretching up but you're taking in a lot of calories because your body's getting ready to stretch up well I was taking in way more calories than I should have been consuming at the time and I remember going shopping at Gap at the kids section and I couldn't wear the girls sizes anymore I had to go to women's. And that was a big reality check for me because I was definitely at the age where I should have still been wearing kids clothes. And because I was eating more than I should have, I had to go straight to women's. And it was kind of embarrassing for me because it made me realize like, okay, I am not like my friends. I'm not like my friends because they're still wearing kids clothes and I'm not. And I also realized that like in pictures and things like that, that I was overweight. However, I did I didn't really diet or anything. I just made sure to like kind of watch more when I was eating, Mm -hmm. but I did then grow and I stretched out and it all kind of just evened out (laughs) per se. But I think for me, what I did realize growing up was what I ate was more important than, well, no, how much I ate was important too. But I have come to realize that what types of food I eat really impact how I feel and how much I eat impacts how I feel. If I eat too much at lunch, I'm going to be tired in the afternoon and I'm not going to want to work or do anything. So um, that was a big mindset for me. But I would say it it happened earlier in life for me just because 
I was an overweight middle schooler. I think so. that a lot of parents, though, we have this understanding of a lot of adults know what you just said, Megan. If I mm-hmm. eat a hamburger and a large order of fries for lunch, I'm going to feel sluggish. But we don't always articulate it in that way. And so our kids don't pick up on this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, because we say things instead like, I'm going to be good today. It's right. Like, well, you're your value is not contingent upon what you eat. It's right. just like, I'm going to eat something that's going to make me feel better in the mm-hmm. afternoon. What you choose for lunch is a morally neutral decision. Yes. <laughs> I do think, and see, Megan, I was asking you, do you remember me saying anything or doing anything? I had to take a class in college. I didn't have to take it. Everybody took it at the University of Florida because it was what the easy the A easy class. A. Yeah. yeah. And it was um, nutrition. It was. It, it was a food class. And I really thought about this the other day because I was out to brunch with my other daughter, Emily, and we were at this really good restaurant, Somi, that I love. And the portions that, like, I'm watching these plates go by. They were slams, you know, so the food is just flying by. I was like, that is huge. Well, one thing I did learn from this class is – we have supersized portions mm-hmm. um, as a culture compared to other places. And basically, your stomach is the size of your fist. The bigger your fist, the bigger a person you are, the bigger your stomach. And when you look at your plate, if you've got more of that on there, remember... I have very big hands. I just want to just for <laughs> the record. I have large, no, look at how bad man hands. No, your fist. Make a fist. I know, in which a big hand creates a big well, fist. Well, you lucky thing. You yeah. could eat more. But the point was... The point, because if I told myself in my head I was going to go on a diet and not eat till one, I would want to definitely eat till one. So that would not work with for me at all. That would just be yeah. more of a temptation. It would be in my mind more. But I did learn from that class that, hey, if I go out to eat, I can take the rest home and eat it again. Mm. It's not like it's going away. Food yeah. in the U.S. is not going away. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. There's really no rush to eat more and um, shove it in. Um, so yeah. So have practicality, I guess, transparency with your kids and just like, Hey, save it. And and I will say this for kids too. I feel bad for them. The cupcakes, the cookies, the special occasions they go to, it's constantly in front of them. I I mean, treat day all the time. And so it is hard to say, you know, okay, if you're really not that hungry, eat half the cupcake, save half for later. Yeah. That was a big thing that I had to kind of learn because my mom was diabetic, so we didn't have a lot of treats in our house. So, like, we did grow up with portion control. And it wasn't restrictive, but, like, we had 15 Cheez-Its. We had, Mm. you know, whatever, which is not an evil thing for her to do. It's not like she was like, you can't, like, have the snack or anything. But, like, you know, I think when I would get around my friends and they had unlimited access to food, it was just like, wow, that's so different. And, like... You know, I had to kind of, like, unlearn some stuff because, like, I got into, like, a lot of stuff in college and all that. And then, you know, just unlearning, like, diet culture and stuff like that because I can't do, like, an intermittent fasting. I can't do anything like that because I will take it to the extreme. So it's, like, for me, like, you have to be self-aware enough to know, Mm -hmm. is this going to become obsessive and rigid for me? Because if it is... Like you said, you don't want to get into this place where you're like, I can't even have a smoothie that my son made or a bite of a smoothie because I'm going to, quote unquote, ruin my diet, ruin my day, you know? So, like, really just be aware of – and, you know, like, I have friends who are like, I can't – like, I I told myself this for the longest time. I can't have ice cream in the house. I said that for the longest time because I was like, I'm going to binge it. I have – so many tubs of ice cream in the house because I keep forgetting they're in there. And then I'm like, oh, ice cream. Like, I just, it's it's something I've told myself for a long time, but like give yourself the freedom to really like learn your behavior around food. And then, you know, you got to make a decision for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, One thing in response kind of to the way you started the whole conversation, Chloe, is that experts are saying that parents' behaviors aren't solely to blame for food issues in kids. It's Mm -hmm. also environment, it's social media, it's genetics. But what is true is that kids are receiving messages and parents can either be uh, the counter narrative to it or they can reinforce what Mm -hmm. they are hearing and seeing and, and like hearing from friends or seeing online. And one of the examples of that is that the almond mom <laughs> thing? <laughs> like, yes, I, it's an almond mom. So oh, I, I would love to tell you. Um, <laughs> okay, so Yolanda Hadid, do you know who she is? No, Gigi Hadid, yes, her mom, Yolanda, mm-hmm. um, was on 
the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's all these clips of her that were literally like 10 years ago. She hasn't been on the show in a long time. And Gigi says, like, Yolanda's just very critical of Gigi's body, her diet, everything. And Yolanda, or Gigi says to Yolanda, I had like half an almond today. And Yolanda's like, good, you should eat just like a couple almonds and just chew them really, really well. And it's like trying to make her like really savor the almonds. And then it's just turned into this montage of all these videos of her saying like, you know, you can have one bite of cake and then you have to be good. <laughs> well, Megan, then I was a really bad example because I lived on dark chocolate, dark <laughs> chocolate covered almonds for how long Megan how oh long was that let me case? clarify I don't think your eating habits are healthy to this day <laughs> Sam's because gonna have it and I would like to... stock up <laughs> well and you just like get you get stuck on one food and then the entire yeah that's so true Susan just comes in with like food. frozen peas and just oh eat chicken food. chicken chips <laughs> chicken, chicken yeah. chips all yeah. day every day she's too. stuck on one thing but then it, your dad also ate like almond butter yeah. for the first six yeah, months that really I knew weird. him. That's I think the first six like, months I worked here, that's all he ate. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised I don't have like worse <laughs> food issues because that's what I grew up with. But, yeah. but now know. Almond Mom is like a hashtag, right? And there's people that parody it. Yeah. Um, over 189 million views on hashtag Almond Mom. And the different, what are the different videos? I've never seen one. Well, I saw one. Oh, this made me so annoyed. But it's this woman talking to her friends and their daughters and she's like kind of berating the girls for like you eat like that you're gonna look like this and just like kind of going off on them and oh. the mom doesn't know that she's filming but I was like oh my gosh mm. like I and I have friends whose moms were like that yeah. and it's just like so I don't think that most moms are like that. I think most of us are maybe carrying some of our own issues and then seeing our children do things and wanting to protect them from maybe some of the issues that we yeah. are holding on to. So like, how do you help your child embrace a relationship with food that tells them that food is fuel yeah, and that a carrot is not better than a cupcake in its essence it is a piece of food it is ha it, but what is better and worse is like the quantity that you eat mm -hmm. doesn't make you bad or good but you eat to fuel your body and this thing gives you fuel and this thing gives you sugar mm -hmm. which will just fuel you for a moment like how do we how do we make that shift i do remember susan asking me this she goes do you eat to live or do you live to eat? Mm. Depends on the, and I depends on the day of the month. I, was like, <laughs> oh, I thought about it and I was like, I kind of live to eat right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, but it was a good reminder of like, we're not here just to eat. Like that's not our, that's not yeah. our purpose. Food gives us life, not the other way around. And so, but however, on the other hand, I kind of did have to be told that. So like, I think the tough situation is like, you don't want to give your kids issues with foods or, or an eating complex or anything like that. But if they are unhealthy, it also is your job to say something to them if they're eating too much or if they're overweight or things like that. And I think most of the time it's not even too much. It's, it's what we're eating mm -hmm. in combination with too much. And I do think there is a tendency to, um, when your child says they're hungry to give them something to eat instead of saying, no, you can wait till dinner because that's when the good food is happening. Because, you know, the filler food is never the good stuff. It right. just isn't right. um, unless they're grabbing a piece of fruit or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it's OK to wait. Our pediatrician, um, my third child, did not like food as much as my girls did. In fact, he was a picky eater. And so I did ask Dr. McKell about it. And I said, you know, he just he just didn't eat. And he said, Susan, I've never, um, you know, had a child starve to death. And so when he's ready to eat, he'll eat. Just don't start giving him just chicken nuggets and hot dogs because that's what he likes. Mm -hmm. You make him wait. And if he gets hungry enough, he will eat the broccoli. Mm -hmm. But, you know, no dessert. I mean, it's just like you set up these little rules. You got to try everything on the plate. And you don't have to eat it all, but you got to try everything. And we don't have dessert if we don't eat what's on the plate. Um, kind of thing. It's simple things, and then no snacks. I, you know, it's one hour before dinner. You know, you. I feel like you're not having cheese it's at all. Yeah, <laughs> that, just last this, night. This from the this from the lady whose grandson was braiding her yesterday for eating chocolate chips before her dinner. Yes, he was. But I, see, I don't have to live by those rules. Don't anymore. do as I do. Do as I tell you. <laughs> it's yeah, over so for me. Like, I I played the good game. Timing him. She was facetiming him, and she goes. I'm eating chocolate chips. And he's like, I want some. And I said, no, not 
you need to eat dinner first. And he looked at her and he goes, did you eat dinner? And she goes, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. I said, this is my dinner. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just last night, I, I was reprimanding the boys for something. And I said, if this argument continues, you guys can go to your room without dinner. And the little one looks at me and goes, that's abuse. And my husband and I oh. looked at each other and started laughing. We're like, <laughs> oh, my God. No, it's not. It's like, if you, no, never, not. if you never fed us, it would be. And we said, yes, it would be. You can go one meal. You can skip one meal. And he, they, they stopped arguing because he oh did not gosh. want to skip Taco Tuesday. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's a great point, though, Abby. You had Taco Tuesday. And they know it's Taco Tuesday, and that's making food fun. Yeah. You know, this is our tradition. It's Taco Tuesday. Get hungry. Everybody go run around the house. We're going to work up an appetite. And, of course, not exercise, but making activity mm. fun to burn off those calories that we are all getting a lot of because the sugar has infiltrated every food type known to man in the U.S. So, you know, staying active is an important balance. Too. Another thing that I was reading about in a New York Times article that I'll link to in the show notes, they said that one way to really build a healthy food mindset at home is to serve your food. Uh, your food family style instead of plating your kids food for mm. them and they said that part of that is that it gives the child autonomy over their own body and makes them feel as if they're part of that collective family experience um, and then they'll kind of warm up more to the things that they're being that are being made available to them it doesn't mean they have to eat everything they can choose and Maybe this time they are still saying no to broccoli, but next time they'll say yes to the broccoli. And it helps them from operating from what is known as a scarcity mindset where they feel compelled to make as, take as yeah. much food as possible anytime they get the chance. Instead, they listen to whether or not they're hungry. I totally agree with that because we, we did adopt two kids from Russia and they had been in a scarce situation. And so they kind of went crazy here. And the... Uh, counselor said to us there's two things you really can't control in a child what goes in their mouth and then what comes out of their mm -hmm. body and how they do that and so you if you try to control it it almost puts them in a mode of Survival. trying to take control back uh, yeah. and and so that you can develop food issues if you try to control too much yeah mm. i also thought kind of in the kind of to wrap up the conversation and just in general should i diet in front of my kids another thing that i read in this times article this dietitian said, if you're feeling like I need to hide my diet from my kids, maybe what you're really saying is, I don't want to do this, but I don't know what else to do. And it's okay to be in a hard place with your body. You don't have to have all the answers. But if you want your kids to not have a difficult relationship with pizza or cupcakes or whatever, then you have to work on your own relationship with it. And you can evaluate any potential change in your diet or in the, the way that you eat or whatever by asking is this going to let me be flexible, positive, and joyful with my children? And is this something that I want to teach my kids? Is this something I want them to pick up from me? Because they're going to either directly or indirectly. And so if you don't answer yes to both of those, then it might be time to, to look at a different plan for yourself and your health. All right. So how about you? What kind of relationship do you have with food? And how do you try to pass on positive food talk to your kids? You can answer via the link in the show notes and subscribe to the I'm on Minute to get parenting articles in your inbox every single weekday. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.